But if we're, if we're treating anal with Botox today, you've had Botox before. I have, yes. And what are your areas of concern? Um, forehead here, frown lines, crow's feet, okay. and a little bit above my lip for my gummy smile. Okay, give me the big giant smile. So this, the gum exposes the, the, I'm sorry, the lip exposes the gum. So we put Botox in the levator, the lacrimal muscle right here. It looks like we've done some Botox in your chin Engine, before. Yes. And some, punch your lower lip out, like this here. This pebbly chin will soften that as well. Okay, you can lay your head on back. Thank you. It's 20, 20. I mean, the 20 units in her gabella, that's kind of a light, light, light number of units, but she's been treated before. She's kind of man. This is the Procerus, the cardio muscles. And then forward Procerus. Four in the depressor, super silly. And two and a half in the Per year, super silly, so you should have 20 units there. 20. Now we're going to crow's feet or the orbicularis muscle. I start at the very top. This will give us a Botox brow lift. And two and a half units per spot. Proximally. It's a very tiny 32 gauge needle. There's various dilutions of Botox. You mix, it comes in a dry powder. People talk about diluting Botox. Well, it actually comes dry. You have to dilute it to inject it. We used a 1cc dilution for that Botox. I'm using a 5cc dilution for this Botox in the forehead because I wanted to spread a little further. You need to have that. So this is eight minutes and putting into right into our dermis. So we call this microtox. We're putting much smaller amounts in because the forehead is a muscle that lifts your eyes. And we want to preserve the lifting function. And studies have shown that if you put the Botox into the skin of the forehead versus in the muscle, you'll preserve more of your lifting function. Whereas if you go deep into the muscle, you actually get a little bit of droopy, right? drooping to the brow. So we want things to lift as we get older, nothing looks better droopy at all in the body. Does that sound good, Anna? No droopiness? Sounds good. That was eight units I gave her maybe 12 shots or so. Now for the gummy smile, I wouldn't give a big smile again. Relax, right here in this muscle. Tiny little dose of two and a half milligrams, two and a half units. Two and a half units. And then for chin, heavily chin, I'm doing the same thing. Into the mentalis muscle. Very mentalis muscle. Now squeeze your muscles afterwards. Scrunch your eyes. So, so there's evidence that if we scrunch our muscles right after Botox, it sets in a little bit better. In reality, Botox might not kick in for two to seven days, but it attaches to the muscle in about four minutes. So work the muscles right afterwards. And also, Botox is what's called a zinc metal peroxidase, requires zinc to function. So we tell our patients to take zinc, sometimes even before they come in, but take zinc 50 milligrams a day for two or three days. And stay away from things that bind to zinc, such as uh, grains and leggings. Now, she has little dots on her skin, and those will go away by the time she gets in her car today. Uh, the Botox starts being effective as soon as 12 or 24 hours, but it really gets better for about two weeks. And that's when we decide we have to do any additional treatments, not until two weeks go by. Our goal for Anna was to make her prettier. And I've seen a lot of women that are coming in, they want to have no movement in their face. It really is a kind of undesirable trait. It might be popular on Instagram and on social media. But if you totally freeze your forehead, the central brow starts drooping. And the forehead along, elongates. We want her eyes to stay in the same position or slightly lift. So I put 40 units in the depressor muscle, the muscle that pulls down, and only eight in the muscle that lifts. So thank you very much. Thank you.